is Sam. Today I'll be showing you how to create an EQ that mimics that of a real desk in Logic Pro X. The desk I've chosen is an RM Series 24. It's a 24 channel desk with each channel having its own four band EQ with additional high pass and low pass filters. Let's have a look in more detail. There are two pass filters. A low pass which is fixed at 9K with a high pass which can sweep from 5 Hz all the way up to 200. The low shelf works at either 50 or 150 Hz, while the high shelf operates at 7 or 12K. Finally, there are two sweepable parametric EQs, a low mid with a range of 150 to 2K and a high mid with a range of 1500 to 15K. I'm going to create an EQ setting that matches those of the RM on this drum track. First, we're going to select our EQ using the plugins menu. One of the nice things I like about Logic Pro X is that you can now increase the size of each plugin while you're looking at it. This means you can reduce the size when you just want to monitor stuff. and use the same drop down menu to increase the size when you want to actually do some editing on it. Now Logic Pro X's EQ comes with four parametric EQs built in, so we want to turn two of them off to mimic the RM24. Let's look at the high pass filter first. Now this is a sweepable filter with a range going from 5 Hz to 200 Hz. I'm going to set it somewhere in the middle. Obviously in the real world we would use the dial to sweep our high pass filter up and down the range, thereby eliminating any of the kind of extraneous low noise that we wanted to get rid of. I'm going to leave it on around about 100 Hz. One of the things we don't know is how sharp the slope of the pass filters is, but the 48 dB per octave slope should be enough. In contrast, the low pass filter is fixed at 9K, and again, we're going to use a slope of 48 dB per octave. And on our real world RM desk, both of these pass filters can be activated or deactivated using a button on the console. We can mimic this by turning on and off the individual pass filters on our EQ plugin. The low shelf works at either 50 or 150 hertz. I'm going to set it at 150 and it can either boost or attenuate the signal by up to 15 dB. You can see there's quite a lot of overlap between our high pass filter and our low shelf. The high shelf operates at either 7 or 12K. I'm going to set it at 7. Again, it can boost or attenuate the signal by up to 15 dB. And again, there's quite a lot of overlap between the high shelf and the low pass filter. The low mid-range parametric filter operates between 150 and 2K. Again, it has a boosting attenuation range of 15 dB. Now I'm not sure exactly what the width of each of the two parametric equalizers is, but this particular width looks a little too wide to me, so I'm going to narrow the width by increasing the Q value on this particular EQ filter. That looks a bit more realistic. The high mid-range EQ works between 1500 to 15K, Again, that width looks a bit too wide, so I'm going to narrow it by increasing the Q value. And that's our EQ setting finished. Let's have a listen. We can mimic the workings of the real desk by sweeping the mid-range EQs up and down, trying to get the best possible EQ for the sounds that we're recording. We can even assign these EQs to particular smart controls. 
and that allows us to use any real-world control devices that we have to mimic the controls on the RM24. Finally, we have to save the setting so that we can use it later. Just select Save As. Name your setting. Try not to type like a buffoon. And press Save. Remember to test your EQ by bypassing it. Logic Pro X now has a really nice feature which allows you to easily bypass channel strip plugins. Thanks for watching, hope you find it useful.